Good evening, Australia. Welcome to the show. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Got a great man on the couch, Rod Butters. He needs no introduction. A very, very successful entrepreneur and um, uh, and also one of our uh, former sporting heroes. That, that's right, Rod, isn't it? Thank you very much for coming on the show. Oh, great pleasure, Michael. Thank you. Um, I don't know that anyone's ever described me as a sporting hero before. You know, I was uh, I played at the St Kilda Footy Club as a 15-year-old in their seconds, but uh, I was pretty ordinary. Uh, never never made the seniors, but um, uh, spent plenty of time in sport administration. So uh, indeed, yeah, well, that, that makes you a sporting hero. Because yeah. you've had a few wins. <laughs> Maybe and then one. and then um, uh, tell me the journey. Tell you, you you've become very successful. You've um, created a lot of uh, successful businesses, and um, um, and then also went through your own tough times. Sure. Yeah. Look, I um, I was a really very shy kid, extraordinarily shy, and then. Uh, played a bit of footy at the Saints, uh, not that great, but I found business and I really uh, got very passionate very quickly about business. Um, I bought my first company when I was about 27. Uh, I bought it for 50 grand and I sold it six years later for 60 million. Is that and amazing? That was ridiculous. And um, so I tried to retire at 37 uh, unsuccessfully. I then uh, scribbled some ideas on a bit of paper and we sold that company five years later for 80 million. So I was running around thinking I was a genius and um, and that's when I went to the footy club and I soon found out I was no genius. But I built a very strong team, uh, you know, to to help us turn the Saints around. Can you tell me how how, um, how, how does that position, how was that created? Did they approach you to be the president? No, the uh, Grant Thomas was a mate of mine. He went on to coach the club. He was a mate of mine. And we went and saw the Saints play at Waverley one day and they, they gave up a 10-goal league, uh, lead. Pardon me. And uh, Tomo turned to me and said, we've got to fix this joint. And we'd had a few beers. So uh, we approached the president of the day, Andrew Plimpton, and we said we'd like to get involved, and Andrew was getting tired. So I ended up as president, Tomo ended up as coach after the bloody fiasco, and um, and we turned the place around. We built a great list, and we Amazing. Uh, made, made a lot of money, and very profitable. Um, but it went to my head, you know, and I was a young bloke, I was around 40, I had too much money, more money than sense, and I was buzzing around the world, world first class, and, and I ended up an alcoholic and a drug addict. And, Isn't that um, amazing? And thanks for sharing. And I suppose all, all that business success, you transferred into um, your role as the president, and, uh, it, and you ran it like a, a very successful world-class business. Yeah, we did, yeah. I mean, we, we brought business principles into mm. the place, and uh, we measured everything, and we had a strategic plan, and we attracted great people, and we measured the performance of not just the playing group, but, but the business side of it, and we took a few risks and in the business side, and they paid off. And But it, it was really about bringing great people in, mm. you know, get, bringing very talented people in. And Rod, life got so exciting for you, Flo flying around business class mm. and a few champagnes on the plane more and then getting few. there. And of course, when things get exciting, we, we want more excitement and then we, we end up having a few lines of Coke places and, 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 and mm. it makes you feel great and the alcohol. So th- then you found it became a uh, uh, an addiction? Oh, that's right. Um, looking back, uh, I'm now seven years clean and sober, but looking back, I'm a... Uh, flat out sort of guy I mean any, anything I do I do flat out yeah. and that includes drinking and gambling and drugging and any other a- activity that involves addiction is just my personality and uh, for a long time I was very high functioning I had very successful businesses the footy club and I could present to the world as high functioning but when those things were stripped away from me and I lost the presidency of the footy club uh, a year later I married a, a girl and um, and uh, that lasted four months. That that wedding, uh, marriage, pardon me, and that got stripped away. Um, all of a sudden, I was naked. I was bare. I was emotionally raw. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I found out was that I, I didn't have the emotional skills to mm. cope with setbacks. I had the business skills. I had the people skills. I had the financial acumen. I could do a business deal, but I was an emotional retard, and I just couldn't cope with major setbacks so I used drugs and alcohol which worked for a long time but they eventually stop working and your life comes crashing down mm. and Rod during those difficult times when uh, when you realize the um, you know the sort of maybe lack of coping skills the emotional um, breakdown 
I mean, you're a very popular fellow. You're surrounded by hundreds of great friends and acquaintances. Do you then sort of look back and think, well, out of all those acquaintances, there might only be a few people that, that you can closely trust? Oh, sure. I think it's, I've heard it said that if you can count five close friends, you know, on one hand, you're doing well. And, mm. and I think it's human nature when you've got a bit of success and you've got a big house and you're throwing all the great parties. Everyone wants to be involved. I think that's just human nature. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I ever believed that I had 100 friends, really. I was just having a lot of fun and they were having a lot of fun with me. So I, I, don't, I don't think I fooled myself that I had, you know, um, a car park full of mates. But, um, you know, when you get to the end and um, things, alcohol and drugs stop working and you start that, you know, we've talked about the rock bottom, Mm -hmm. you hit the rock bottom, you know, it's a pretty lonely existence and it's one where, you know, I had to really dig deep and, you know, search hard, and there were times when I felt like just let's end it. You know, Isn't let's, amazing, let's just right. jump. Isn't yeah. that amazing how the mind um, can can take people then? And, and we've yeah. all been on that down. You yeah, know, yeah. We've, we've all been on the down. It just depends how low we get. What month and what year was that? Can you remember? It was the twenty seventh of August two thousand and nine. Okay, it was my rock bottom, and that's when you realised uh, it's it's uh, time to get up and go. And well, I, I, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't describe it as an experience or a feeling of time to get up and go. I just was. I was gone. I, I was. It was a surrender. You know, I, I was beaten to a pulp. I'd had enough. Yeah. I couldn't function any longer. And quite serendipitously, I, I'd met a fellow at, at a party a few weeks earlier who he wasn't drinking or drugging and yet he was at a party in my social network which was rather odd um, and I bumped into him in the street and there was something different about him and I told him that I was in a lot of trouble emotionally that I'd been using a lot of drug and alcohol and um, and he shared with me his story of recovery and I identified and so I got some hope. It's an amazing synchronicity how, how yeah. um, the laws of the universe work sometimes. And, but, but thanks That's for right. sharing. It's amazing. And uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back very shortly. Thank you very much for watching. Rod Butters on the couch, a very decent, down-to-earth and authentic uh, fella. I really like him. He's uh, sharing his success and also how to get through the difficult times. Rod, um, uh, the marriage, uh, it was a short one. Yeah. But do you think because uh, you were going through your, your own issues at the time, you couldn't give enough of what she was after? Sure. I think um, looking back again at uh, the cycle of addiction and how addiction works, uh, when I was rampant in terms of my drug and alcohol use, um, I was really quite insane. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you're just doing, what you're doing is not sane. Yeah. It's insane, the way you're living. And, you know, so being that insane I, it was all about me I was selfish and I couldn't get enough and really the concept of like the concept of love in that situation is 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 warped because it's an unhealthy environment and in the end she just said I I can't do this anymore and um I mean, I had enough awareness to know I was in deep trouble, mm-hmm. you know, with my addiction. So it was almost initially a sense of relief. There was an intuitive sense mm. of relief. And that, that probably added to the pressure as well. And then when you sort of, um, in the next sort of few months, being by yourself. Yeah, well, I jumped on a yacht and I sailed around uh, Asia and I was thinking that would fix the problem. But mm-hmm. the problem was in here. So it didn't matter where I went, you know, well, that's what part of the too, world. That's because a lot of people try to escape, don't they? That's right. You see we, that everyone going to the Gold Coast and then coming back. That's right. We call it geographicals. Mm. I mean, we try and get away from the problem, but we take the problem with us. Mm. So, um, you know, I then, uh, as I said earlier, quite serendipitously bumped into a fellow. His name was Mark, and, and he didn't drink or drug. Mm. And I found that quite odd because I thought everybody drank and drugged. Mm. You know, I really did. And... Um, 
and he didn't drink or drug. And he told me his story. He'd been managing a, a rock star um, uh, musician who'd sold 40 million records in the UK, and he ended up with a serious uh, cocaine addiction. And then he introduced me to another mate whose name was David, and he had a very serious heroin addiction. And they just shared with me what they did. They just told me what they did to overcome addiction. And I was so broken. I was so messy I was so childlike I just said what do I do now and they said you go to a meeting a recovery meeting what do I do now have a shower what do I do now you know come and is that amazing and you just slowly you started you got a beginner's mind again yeah from, yeah you're like from, a student from the you know successful person that everybody listen to and mm. all of a sudden you become a student but you hadn't been a student for a long time you were you were given the orders you you, you created um well that's right when, when you're when you're an addict you believe your own bullshit mm. you know your mind tells you lies and you believe it that tomorrow will be different well my tomorrow lasted 10 years and it was never any different so in the end the insanity of that is such that your self-esteem gets stripped bare and you, you know you're no good. You know, addicts aren't bad people. They just do bad things, you know. And this is an area that I'm really uh, agitating government here in Victoria mm. uh, to understand, stop treating addicts like criminals. Like, if they break the law, we've got to lock them up. I get that. But let's stop treating them like criminals. Let's start treating them like mental health patients mm. and help them to get recovery and get them back into the workforce and get them to be the parents that they, they want to be. That's great advice. Because isn't it amazing how judgmental society is? You know, somebody... Uh, has uh, so much work pressure they might be going through a divorce and and they, they might be drinking or taking drugs but and they're acting a bit differently away from normal and people think oh they're acting normal and they sh back away but we're a very judgmental society aren't we well we are and i think that um it's easy to judge mm. you know it's easy to put someone in a box mm. it's easy to label um and it's sad because, you know, in Victoria last year, 479 people died from overdose mm. in Victoria. In, in Richmond alone, it was something like 120 people. That's amazing. In King's Cross, where they've got a safe injecting room, zero. So how can our state government sit by mm. and pretend this isn't a problem? People are dying, mm. you know. Children are being orphaned. Families are being traumatised. The cost to society is massive because we have such weak leadership in this state where mm. people aren't prepared to take on the tough issues. And there are models all around the world that have proven that mm. there's answers. We just need the courage and the backbone. It's, it's amazing we've got somebody of your calibre and your intelligence to, you know, to get real about this and uh, to, you know, in, inspire change. Congratulations. Um, so with that advice from meeting those, those lovely gentlemen, what did you do next? I picked up a drink. <laughs> uh, because I'm an addict, yeah. you know, and uh, you I went, celebrated too. Yeah, I went to my first <laughs> meeting, recovery yeah, meeting, yeah. and I got 24 hours of clean time, uh -huh. and so I picked up a drink, yeah. and that lasted three weeks. So I rang Mark back, and I said, "You wouldn't believe it. I've been drinking for the last three weeks." He said, "What do you mean? I wouldn't believe it. You're an addict. Of course you're going to drink." You know, so it's what a were you drinking? Alcohol, red wine, whatever I get my hands okay. on. Okay. Um, so he explained to me the pathology of addiction, what happens, how the mind works. And left unattended, I will pick up a drink. And that's why I do a lot of recovery meetings and I do a lot of work in, in the recovery space with new people and young people trying to get clean. Fantastic. Because it keeps me engaged, it keeps me current, if you like, you know. Because... You know, like a hairdresser cuts hair. Yes. A motor mechanic fixes motors. An alcoholic drinks alcohol. That's how it is. Now, I may not have had a drink for seven years, but I'm as just as susceptible as picking one up if I don't maintain a program of recovery.
So at a social meeting, you won't have a glass of champagne? Oh, God, no. No, no. No, no I can't drink. And do you feel much better? Oh, I love life. Yeah. What no. if we went to Richmond and visited a good mate and just had a quick line of Coke? No, well, I probably wouldn't get home for three weeks. And uh, <laughs> you know, and I might end up in bed with your girlfriend. And, <laughs> and we don't need that. We don't need that. <laughs> no. We'll be back. Thank you very much for watching. Rod, you're a very um, very kind-hearted fella. Were you always that way? Yeah, look, I was. Uh, um, uh, that's just something that um, I think was, was always part of who I am. But it got very messy when I was in active addiction. Sure. Because active addiction is, is um, characterised by selfishness. During um, the, the difficult times when you were really suffering... Did uh, business ever hit? Did uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, I lost everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, no, no, I, I blew the lot, um, oh. and it was a big number. So <laughs> I was a bit embarrassed to talk about it. But no, but it's just life. You it's know, life. Um, I made some ridiculously foolish decisions. I so we all we all walked past that beautiful place that changed colours there on, on the beach there. Yeah, you know, and um, and and tell me about your life now. You're, you you've um, um, Seven years ago, you you picked up and um, you know you're going you're doing you're a businessman, a successful businessman. You, um, but you're also doing a lot of community work. Yeah, look to to, to stay sober. Um, it's really important for me to work with other addicts and yes. to work with people that want to get well, and to return the favour. I mean, strangers walked next to me to show me how to get well, and the least I can do is to walk next to someone that says, hey, Rod, I, I want what you've got. Mm. Can you show me how to do it? That's beautiful. And I don't go to bars anymore, and I used to drink for six to eight hours a day, so I've got six to eight hours spare. So I need to use that productively, and that's what I do. And, Rod, tell me about your life now. How do you feel your days? Um, I'm building a new business in the IT space and the consulting and executive search space, which is the industry that I've spent most of my life in, so I'm very passionate about that. Um, I've got a gorgeous partner, and um, and we spend time walking on Elwood, Elwood Beach with our boxer puppy, Pepper. And um, How long have you been with this lovely lady for? Uh, three years now. Terrific. Yeah, and she's a great girl. Um, but I live a very simple life. You know, in mm. the past, it was all first class, aeroplanes, New York, London, Paris, this, that, A-list, red carpet. And, you know, I mean... A lot of those people are pretty boring, and I had to drink a lot and take a lot of coke just to cope with them. But now I have a simple life, and um, you know I'm very interested in meditation and um, you know some of the Eastern uh, philosophies around uh, wellness and mm, reflection. I can feel your energy. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've been meditating for twenty years. It's right. It's a great tool for clearness. Yes. Calmness, Clarity. emotional detachment. Yes, isn't it? Yeah, and I think uh, I've learned. I've also learned to reflect. Yes. So at the end of a day, I just take a few minutes out to reflect. How was I today? You know, do I owe any, anyone an apology? Was I fair and decent? You know, just a bit of reflection. And because I bet you, you do. You, you, you show gratitude in the mornings as well. Oh, enormous gratitude. Yeah. I should be dead. You know, I, 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 I. I somehow managed to overcome the disease of addiction which kills people mm. and it kills innocent people i mean try living with an addict that's mm. hard work and families get destroyed um they get damaged emotionally you know living with an addict is is bloody difficult you know because we're unpredictable what's your advice to um number one um addicts who know they've got a problem but they're not quite ready to give up yet well, you know, we often say that to an addict, um, you know, you, you're on an elevator and you're heading down to the basement. Mm. Do you want to go all the way to the basement, which is probably a morgue, an institution or a jail? Mm. That's where you'll end up. Mm. Or do you want to get off on the third floor mm. and maybe save your life and improve the life of your family and friends? Because we're pretty ordinary people when we're in addiction. Mm. You know, we're not pleasant. We're selfish. So, so say uh, there are some young or older people watching. They might um, really hit the grog 
and they know they're functional alcoholics or they mm. might be on ice or mm. cocaine addictions mm. and mm. what services are there oh there's there's, there's so, so much there really is i yeah. mean you've really only got to put your hand up and go yeah. on a google or or ask around and there's yeah. so much support and it's free but people um they have to be ready don't they yeah, you, you, you've, you've got to be ready. You, you've got to be ready. And and most of us need to hit the absolute rock bottom yeah. before that silly thing sits on my shoulders yeah. is, 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 is ready to... But, you know, the more we talk about it, the more we open it up and demystify it and, and treat it for what it is. It's mm. a disease. It's a mental health disorder. Mm. You're not a bad person. You're just sick. And my message is, put your hand up, get online, ask for help, and you'll be amazed. People will surround you, and they'll take you to recovery meetings, and they'll support you. So what you're saying, Rod, even though we might be broken and um, maybe suicidal, we can heal the mind, and we can can rebuild the self-esteem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And... uh, you know, self-esteem comes from doing, act, you know, esteemable acts, you know, helping others. Yes. And, you know, I remember when I had seven cars, a huge house and all the toys, I was miserable. Is that I really was miserable. I didn't enjoy life, you know. I might enjoy life for 24 hours if I bought a new car or if I had a new mistress, but that's not what life was about. And, you know, you need... I needed to take a lot of drugs and alcohol just to be functioning and just to mm. be okay. So it's quite right then when uh, when people say that uh, the Eastern philosophy is quite important. And in the West, we uh, we think happiness is very much uh, based on externals. Whereas sure. East is very much we, we, we go to Thailand and Bali. And we we see people in sheds um, being happy and celebrating, yeah, that's right. don't we? Yeah, and I think for me, I, I looked at happiness as the car, the house, mm. the title, the status the girl on my arm now now in recovery i still want to build a successful business of course i still want to have some nice things nothing wrong with that yes but i derive my self-esteem from of course from other areas but i, ca- I couldn't imagine rod butters in uh, in cattle class no. Oh, yeah. oh yeah no i do it yeah no i do it i do it i flew to india last year cattle class you get used to it it's, it's a humbling experience but it's fine you're you know. so humble and, and when and when do you meditate? Well, I've just started doing a weekly uh, Buddhist meditation class in Bamaras, and you know, which is nearby. And um, ideally, I'd meditate, you know, every morning for ten or fifteen minutes. But I'm I'm not that disciplined, so I might do every second or third morning. But I, I've learned to meditate throughout the day, just right. for a few seconds. Thank you so much for joining us. You're a beautiful human being. Thank you. And. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that uh, the government changes their views and that we can get a yeah. lot more I addicts hope, into recovery. I hope they grow some backbone and start treating addiction for what it is. Mm, that's very really important. Do. Great to be with you. Yeah, thanks very much for watching, folks. He's a terrific fella. And uh, we'll be back next week. All the best. Love and best wishes. Good night.